We're here today to honor Private Edward Thayer, who at age 16 began his military career in, in Shepherds County. His life really was not atypical for a person of that time, but what he worked on was most atypical and most important to all of us uh, that have lived in America since the time of the Revolution. We're very pleased today um, and, and honored to have many patriotic groups here with us and many local representatives as well. We'd like to recognize the, first of all, the descendants of the family who sponsored this event uh, and are here today to tell you more about the Patriot. We'd like to recognize the Veterans Association, Leo Parent, the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution, Cindy Watson and Joanne Garland, the American Veterans, uh, Veterans I'm sorry, by Will Thayer, uh, the VFW, Kurt Vile, our local press, Kevin Murray and Charlie O'Gorham, and selectmen's John O'Rourke and Jim Moore. Would the color guards please present the colors? Let us come together in prayer. Eternal and ever-living God, we seek your presence here with us in this moment of remembrance and celebration. We give you thanks for the service and dedication of your servant, Edward Thayer, whom we gather here to honor. Our hearts overflow with gratitude for the blessings of our great nation, for its humble beginnings, and for the courage of those who fought for the freedoms we now enjoy as our own. Be present with us, O God, in this time of worship and celebration, and offer us renewed hope and re-inspired enthusiasm for serving the United States of America and for reclaiming ourselves as one nation under God. Amen. Thank you. With Michael Marino, descendant, please come forward. Lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. We in the society have our own pledge to our ancestors, and we'd like to recite that with you now. We, descendants of the heroes of the American Revolution, who by their sacrifices established in the United States of America, reaffirm our faith in the principles of liberty and our constitutional republic, and solemnly pledge to defend ourselves and them against every foe. We have a number of uh, awards that have been given today by various people of the state society. first recognition we have today is from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. This is for the descendants of Edward Thayer in recognition of his 230 anniversary of the enlistment as a soldier with the Continental Army and it's sound by Robert A. DeLiro, Speaker of the House. Thank you. The second is from the Massachusetts Senate. 
Be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to a copy hereof transmitted by the Clerk of the State. And this is signed by, both by the President of the State and the Clerk of the Senate and the Registrar. We have a letter from John Kerry recognizing Edward Thayer, praising his family and the leaders and residents of this town. On the table, you'll find a letter from Scott Brown with a welcoming. And we're also honored to have a citation from the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Would Cynthia Watson please come forward? Good morning. On behalf of the Daughters of the American Revolution, I would like to offer another prayer for the memory of Edward Thayer, for his descendants, and for all of us. You may bow your heads. We give thanks, dear Heavenly Father, for the records of the past which bring inspiration and courage to our generation. We thank you for the lessons taught by dedications of it to events of distant years and to the deeds of long ago. Make our lives fruitful also, that we may add our assurances to these, increasing the value of our examples for the generations yet to be. The unequaled liberties enjoyed in America today are the legacy of brave, strong patriots. Their deep faith and belief in your guidance, together with the hope of living in freedom, fortified them throughout the War of Independence. We give you thanks, O Lord, for your many blessings and ask that your Holy Spirit be with us always. May we never forget those who fought for the freedom of their new country. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We would like to dedicate the headstone at this time. Commander Perkins. If the past is indeed prologue, then a glimpse into the past can provide a source of wisdom and inspiration for the future. As we honor this patriot today, let us be mindful of his service in our, to our nation, and let us rededicate ourselves to the principles for which he held sacred. Let us be together in prayer. As we gather, O oh God, for this dedication today, we ask your blessing upon each of us. We thank you for this occasion as we honor the memory of Edward Thayer. We esteem his patriotism and courage, his faith and loyalty, and his willingness to sacrifice to make our world a better place. We thank you too for America and all patriots who have given us the liberties and privileges that we enjoy. May we be willing to serve you and our nation, even as Edward Thayer did. May the ideals that we remember from the past sustain us today and safeguard us tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We, the members of the Colonel William Henshaw chapter, and members of the Massachusetts Society of the Sons of the American Revolution dedicate this marker to the glory of God and in recognition of the memory of Edward Thayer, a patriot of the American Revolution. Will you please lay the wreath? Laying the wreath will be Alan Van Wert with the Sons of the American Revolution 
and Shirley Thayer Lucius, fourth granddaughter, great granddaughter. Thank you. Uh, I would like to now... We know little about the life of Private Edward Thayer. My family possesses no letters, memoirs, journals, or other writings penned by my patriot ancestor. Official primary sources are sparse. What information we do have suggests that Edward's life was not atypical for a man from his socioeconomic background who lived during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. But for our purposes, it is Edward's life as a young Revolutionary War patriot that we, we remember and honor today. The limited available sources tells us that Edward was a mere lad of 16 when he began his military career, serving first in Shepherd's Company, a local militia unit. After satisfying his term of service, Edward was discharged, but he would soon find himself under arms once more. In June 1781, General George Washington, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, required reinforcements, and he dispatched to each state a request for troops. The Massachusetts legislature responded swiftly by passing the resolve of June 30th, which authorized the governor to order the state's brigadiers to detach from their units a certain number of troops each, so that 2,700 militiamen could be formed into four new three-month infantry regiments, all of which were to be attached to the Continental Army for service at West Point or other billets as deemed necessary by the Army's commanding general. On August 8th, Edward traveled to Rentham, where he enlisted in Captain John Lincoln's company, Colonel Joseph Webb's regiment, one of the four infantry regiments authorized by the resolve. Two weeks later, on August 20, today, he departed for the field and was most likely billeted at West Point. He apparently satisfied his enlistment without incident, and after rendering 114 days service, he was discharged on November 29th, whereupon he returned home. Following the war, Edward and his first wife, Rebecca Hack, moved to Conway, where they made, their town, uh, made the town their lifelong home and birthplace of their eight children. In 1804, shortly after Rebecca's death, he married his second wife, Lena Pratt, who bore him three additional children. On January 25, 1827, Edward, aged 63, was tragically killed when a tree fell upon him. How or why this accident happened is unclear. Lena never applied for a widow's veteran's pension, and she was provided for uh, by proceeds from Edward's estate, which when liquidated consisted of 161 acres of land and other personal property valued at $3,034, or $57,705 in today's currency. Edward lived a simple life. He amassed only moderate wealth and was not particularly influential in civic circles. He worked his land, cared for his wives, and raised his children. Yet, he was wealthy beyond measure, for his youth was indelibly marked by his participation in a great event in world history, the birth of the American Republic. Although it is unlikely that he saw action during the Revolution, his service in that conflict was no less honorable than those of the patriots who fought at Bunker Hill and Yorktown. His willingness to risk his life for the principles that we hold to be true, freedom, equality, and justice, regardless of whether or not at his tender age, he actually understood his service in those terms, certainly qualifies him as an American patriot. Today, Saturday, August 20th, 2011, we honor Edward and thank him for the role that he played in bequeathing to us our great and beloved nation. Thank you. Let us again join together in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, as we go from here, may this marker remind all who pass by of the devotion and dedication of all who have made our nation great. May all be humbled and encouraged by this marker to esteem and perpetuate these virtues with our lives. May the peace of God, which surpasses all, Guard our hearts and minds in the ties of friendship and unity of love. Amen. Firing detail at hand. Hut. Shoulder, arms. To the forward, one step. Right, feet.
season. Fire! We're now going to ring the bell 14 times, 13 for the 13 great colonies and one for our famous leader, George Washington. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Color guard. Shoulder, arm, shoulder. Right shoulder, arm. Uh, and touch. Follow. My name is Vern Thayer. I'm a descendant of Edward Thayer. He's my great-great-great-great-grandfather. Served in the Revolutionary War. Uh, 200 years ago today, uh, Edward signed up with the Continental Army. Um, and he served uh, his time in, in the Army, uh, it was three months, and went to, um, to protect the, uh, the forts and um, the surrounding towns. He came back and bought a farm over by the Buckland border, settled here in Conway, raised nine children, which some are buried right over here. And he has a son buried down there. Edward's wife, Rebecca Hack, her father served in the Revolutionary War. And his son Edward down there, four rows back, his wife Betsy Tro, her father and grandfather served in the Revolutionary War. Uh, her, her grandfather was Captain Israel Tro. So this here is, comes about um, in my efforts to join the Sons of the American Revolution. You have to prove your lineage to a patriot who served in the Revolutionary War. Um, it was a kind of a hard thing to do, connect all the dots. You have to have documentation for 
all your lineage. We, uh, my son, who is a historian, was a big help in this. We tracked down all the documentation we had to, and to for the SAR, Sons of the American Revolution. And in my coming out here to uh, find Edwards' headstone, we saw that it looked a lot like some of these older ones here. It's faded or worn. It's unreadable, practically. In another 20, 50 years, nobody's going to know who Edward was here. So my, with my son's help, we contacted the, the government, the VA, and we made arrangements for a military headstone, which he is eligible. Even though it's a Revolutionary War, that was the first veteran. And they replaced the stone. I have the old stone in, over there in the back of the truck. And uh, Nicholas and Taylor out of Greenfield installed it for me. And that was very nice. I had a lot of help in this. It took me about 10 months we've been working on this. Um, bits and pieces. It started off, we are just going to change the headstone. And, and my, my uh, friend and uh, president of the chapter, Steve Perkins, got involved with me. And we got the SAR. Color Guard, and then the BFW was going to come, and it just grew into what today should be a very nice day, uh, celebrating Edward's participation in the Revolutionary War. A lot of it is Edward was not a Civil War, a Revolutionary War hero. Um, he did what thousands of other soldiers did. They called him, and he answered. He did his three months, did what he had to do, and went back and raised a family. And they never heard from them anymore. And it was thousands of farmers that did that, did what they were asked. And back then, it wasn't just the soldier, it was the family. When he was gone, there was no one to take care of the farm except the wife and the kids. And if they didn't do the chores and everything, he would came, come back, there would be no farm left. So we had more than just the revolutionary soldier. We had the whole families involved in a lot of the times of this. And a lot of them were just quiet, individual farmers, went out, did their thing, for, this, for the country, came back, and you never heard any more about them. And there was a lot of soldiers like this. And that's what uh, made this country. Edward's wife and her father was in the Revolutionary War as well. There's four of his children, and they're pretty well unreadable. This one here is Hezebiah. I think that's what it says. Daughter of Mr. Mr. and Mrs. There, Rebecca There. She, uh, she, uh, born in 1800, looks like three or eight. This one here is Hezadiah. This might have been Hezadiah There. I have the genealogy on these people, that's how come I know. And here we have. Ah, uh, these names. Matilda, Matilda maybe, Matilda. Again, you can't see it right here too well. There, age 26. This one here is in better shape. This one here is Liddy, Liddy Thea. Died March 20th, 1831, age 42. Maybe this, in the shade, it uh, fared better than the, the others. There as well. This Edward died in 1837, I believe it was. Um, there was a disease in Conway at the time. He might have been the cause of that. And then this here is Betsy Tro, who is, uh, like I said, her father and grandfather was served in the Revolutionary War. Grandfather was Captain Israel Tro. Uh, an interesting note about Edward up there, my uh, Revolutionary War. On his original headstone, it says it was killed by a tree. Now, my son and I thought that was pretty odd to have that on a headstone. Given in the day, there would have been a lot of trees falling. Um, and I don't think it would be that unusual for someone to get be killed by a fall of a tree. But we have no answer. But it was on the headstone by fall of a tree. So you kind of like, you know, you got to guess and think and wonder what that was all about. Two, which I'll point out Edward was not part of, we, we researched it, but was Shays Rebellion. And this area here was a big area of Shays Rebellion. The historian of Conway tells me that the hill in the back over there 
Uh, they went winter and camped up there during Shays Rebellion. But we checked the books and the black book for all the people who were involved. His name is not listed. So the Revolutionary War, his estate was valued at the time of his death, 3000 and something like $34. So he wasn't rich. And then he, by the, today's standards, I guess it's like $60,000. Right. So he wasn't a rich farmer either. He just yeah. living off the land. Get him by. Yeah. There's another Revolutionary War soldier up there where that flag is. That's a Revolutionary War soldier too. If you uh, check the cemeteries around Conway, proportionally, they had a lot of soldiers in the Revolutionary War. Right. There was a lot of them. There's another cemetery closer to the center of Conway. And where the old pine trees are, there's a group of a lot of Civil War people. So proportionally, for population, there was, they really did their part. I'm Steve Perkins. I am the president of the uh, Henshaw, Colonel Henshaw chapter of MASSAR, which is Massachusetts Society of the Sons of the American Revolution. The Sons of the American Revolution was formed in 1889, if my memory serves me correct. And... Um, the State Society here in Massachusetts was uh, started that same year and now we currently have five chapters in the state and I'm president of the chapter that's based in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, the SAR's uh, mission really is to perpetuate the memory of those who fought in the revolution or served in some fashion and brought about America's independence from England. and. Um, we try to do that through largely educational programs. It's a challenge these days to get into the schools and deliver those programs, but uh, we continue to do so with events like what we're doing today. Uh, grave marking is we invite people of the local community to come and join us and observe what we do to commemorate uh, patriots who fought in the Revolutionary War. I've uh, been involved with the SAR since 2006 when I, uh, on the heels of my genealogy research, I learned that one of my ancestors was in the Revolutionary War at um, Saratoga, the Battle of Saratoga. He joined in the Albany 13th Militia and so from that information I decided to pursue a membership with the SAR because I personally took a lot of pride in that. I believe most members in the SAR uh, have a personal sense of pride and uh, they want to perpetuate that. Uh, Vern Thayer is one of the active members in our chapter in the State Society and uh, he originally joined on his maternal side and more recently he, he identified his maternal uh, patriot ancestor and then found out where he was buried and where he lived. And so Vern, uh, upon learning that, uh, approached me about uh, planning a, a, a grave dedication, a grave marking, if you will, and his stone was in rather poor shape, Edward Thayer's stone. So he uh, worked diligently through uh, national departments and um, managed to get a stone donated. Uh, and placed here and so we uh, developed plans and worked on it for the past eight or ten months to have this ceremony here today and uh, I am honored to be a part of this. I participated in about three grave dedications, grave markings and they all take a different form depending on what the grave marking will be. Um, but on this date it's special because we have a new stone, we have a newly discovered location for Vern's ancestor and it's really a terrific event today. Uh, this is one of the most uh, sacred events, if you will, uh, the most prized and cherished opportunities for the SAR to recognize the ancestor, the patriot ancestor who actually fought in the revolution. My name is Holly Blair. I'm State Organizing Secretary for the Massachusetts Daughters of the American Revolution. I'm a member of the Mercy Warren Chapter located in Springfield, Massachusetts. 
We are a patriotic organization with members worldwide, not only in the United States, but also in foreign countries. We treasure our heritage. We're very interested in genealogy and knowing where we came from and what we're all about. We're at the dedication today to recognize Private Thayer, which was an American patriot, whereas that's what our organization is all about. We do a lot of service work, and we have a great time doing it. We march in historical parades, Fourth of July celebrations. We dedicate markers or participate with the Sons of American Revolution like we did today. And it's just a great organization to be in. It's open to all ladies age 18 or older, and we would welcome your interest in our organization. If you are interested, go to the Daughters of the American Revolution website, and from there, uh, submit your interest or your name, and you'll be contacted by someone locally. My name is Cindy Watson, and I'm a member of the Mary Mattoon chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. If you don't know who or what the American Revolution societies are about, such as the Sons of the American Revolution and the Daughters of the American Revolution, find out if you have a patriotic ancestor in your family. If you're a female, you would be able to join the daughters. Males, of course, would join the sons. We're here today at the Shirk North Shirkshire Cemetery to honor one of those patriots. And um, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about our DAR chapter. We're based in Amherst, Massachusetts, and we have a membership of about 33 active members. We meet once a month during the months of September uh, through November, and again in February. Uh, we have programs such as the DAR Good Citizens, which is when we sponsor a school, and we have seven schools in our chapter that we sponsor, a senior is chosen as a DAR good citizen at each of the respective high schools. We do a lot of different things. We, we uh, are interested and pursue things such as the environment, of course veterans, uh, historic preservation, education, and the list goes on. But I would suggest that you find a DAR member in your community. I'm sure that you have some here in Conway. Find out about the DAR. Give us a call. Find out if you have a patriot, if you can become a member. You can also go to the national website. Just put in DAR.org and they'll have information there for you to tell you how to apply and all the different programs that are available. Thank you. I'm the great great grandson of Edward there. I wanted to thank everyone for coming here today. Some of you came a very long ways to be here to support me. It was very nice of you to do so. This is a work that took almost a year. I had a lot of help in this, and I'd like to mention some of them. First most is my sister Shirley Carey. Look there, Lucius. She did all the genealogy for me. And you know that what work that was? She did it back when it was lead pencil and shoe leather. <laughs> Traveling to Boston, the New England Genealogical Society, going to the town halls. She's been doing it for over 40 years. A young guy like me comes along. I want to join the SAR. It tells me everywhere I want to go. All I have to do is get the documentations, which it's not all that easy all the time. But number one, my sister Shirley, I thank you ever so much to get me in the SAR. And because of her work, uh, she's in the DAR, my sister Shirley, and my grandson who was marching with me is in the CAR. So we got a family affair going here. Next, I have to thank is my son Jim. My son James has been going to school to 
Boston UMass has his master's in history, so everything I did was had to go through him to be legit. Wait till you see the bill. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy has been a big help. Jimmy is also uh, a computer person, very experienced. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone, Jimmy, well, uh, something happened here. What'd you do, Dad? But he saved me uh, many a time. There's other people here that deserve the thanks, and I can't take too long, but the town of Conway has been very receptive for me today. The selectmen are here supporting me. Um, this, this is a big help for me to have all these people here. The Sons of the American Revolution, the Colored Guard, I thank you guys so much. Every one of you came from east of where I came from, so, and I had a two-hour ride. I thank you ever so much for that. The Daughters of the Revolution, they made appearance here. Thank you very much. Cindy has been a big help. You imagine when I was talking with the DAR, Ginger Carter said, get in touch with this, this lady here. She'll help you. I got in touch with her, and I said, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to replace a headstone of my ancestor. It's worn, you know. Well, we did that back in 2000, was it five or three? They did that in, up in Cold Rain. I'm like, bingo, all right. Tell me what am I supposed to do? How do I? <laughs> Big help. Thank you very much, Cindy. I appreciate it. And Joanne Barley. And Joanne Barley, too. Yes. Joanne? Oh, I haven't met Joanne only through the internet. And she's been helping me a lot. I'm sorry I didn't mention you. I talked to Ginger. Jimmy put me on Joanne. Joanne put me on Cindy. And the three of them took care of me. They took made sure I didn't make any mistakes. Big help. Thank you very much. Our president, Mike Fishbane, I kind of threw this in his lap. I was talking with Steve Perkins, my commander, and my chapter president. He's helped me along. And then all of a sudden we said, oh, Mike, yeah, this is what you got to do when he came here today. He's like, this is the first I've seen of this. A true president, he carried it through. Not a problem. Thank you very much for that. The VFW, I called them up, and the veterans, um, the American vets, I called them, and Leo... I don't think Leo made it today. Leo is the Veterans Administrator. I didn't see him. He's going to try to make it. He was a big help to me as well. You know, it, it, I used to be in management, and I learned one thing. You don't have to know everything. You just have to know who does. And I've been very fortunate in finding people who know what to do, and they helped me out. Thank you very much. This is a great town. I can see why my ancestor came here. And his, his grandson, by the way, down here, he was born here as well. His wife, Betsy Tro. If you look at the pictures up there, you'll see a Salem Tro there. Salem Tro is Edward and Betsy's son. And that follows the way line up to me. If there's anything I could add, is anyone hasn't done your genealogy, do yourself a favor, do your genealogy. You will find history like you wouldn't believe. And some people say, well, my, my ancestor came over on the boat in Ellis Island. That's just a point that they came on. This history beyond that. And if you know, if you go back, you'll find it. You pick up the little stories about your family and it's, it's treasure and you can pass it on. So if anybody needs help in genealogy, there's plenty of people around. Do, do your roots. Claim your heritage. Thank you very much.